Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here Thursday, now the 22nd of May, 2025. Great to have you tuning in once again. I'm back from the Southern Plains. Let's talk about the NOAA Hurricane Outlook and the UK Met Outlook that came out yesterday. We're going to discuss both of those, and then I'm going to explain to you what you should know about all of this. What does it mean? In fact, I've got a very simple statement that will help really wrap all this up and bundle it for you. The numbers are important, but there's something more important than that. All right, so let's take a look. Let's get started. The NOAA headline, they are predicting an above normal 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. The above average Atlantic sea surface temperatures are setting that stage, and it does look like we're not going to have an El Nino. You can almost take that to the bank. You never have anything 100% in the weather world until it's actually happening, it does seem. But boy, it does not look like we're going to have an El Nino. In fact, we might lean more towards La Nina as we get back towards the fall. And all of that should set the stage, as they're talking here, to give us anywhere from 13 to 19 named storms. I know it's quite a range, hard to miss when you have that kind of a range, but I'm just reporting what they've got. Six to ten hurricanes three to five majors, those major hurricanes, your category three and higher, those are responsible for most of the damage that we see. So yeah, it looks like we're going to have a very busy season overall. And then they have the reasoning behind it, and they have improved hurricane analysis and forecast in store for this coming year. That's good. All kinds of tools at our disposal so that we can be as aware as possible. It's not hype. It's just telling you what could be coming. I've said this before. If you have health issues, you want your doctor to make you aware of them when he or she examines you, takes your blood, checks it out. Anybody ever watch the Huberman or listen to Andrew Huberman, the Huberman Lab? Yes, it's that kind of thing. You don't get mad if somebody like Huberman tells you, hey, you got to change things or you're going to get metabolic disease. Same thing with the weather. We're just telling you what we see out there, and it's up to you just like with your health, to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to take action. All right? So when the time comes and we do get our first name storm, we will begin with Andrea and maybe use 19 of them so we could get all the way to Tanya or Tanya, however you pronounce it, right? Uh, that could be what happens. Uh, 16 to 19 name storms total. So we shall see. I'll put a link to this in today's update so you can check it out. Saw this tweet here from... Uh, what is that? Danilo Evangelista? That's a great name. I like that strong name. People that watch the weather, I love it. Social media, yeah, it's got its bad side, but boy, people that really tune into this stuff, uh, you know where to look and it'll pop up and there you go. You came at office yesterday. I was traveling yesterday, coming back from the Southern Plains and saw this out there on the social media universe that the UK Met Office, they're out of the United Kingdom, of course has released its 2025 hurricane season forecast. Pretty active, 16 named storms, nine hurricanes, four majors, and they're calling for an ace, most likely, uh, ace of 150, and I like these little infographics that they have put together. The range is anywhere from nine, low end, if all kinds of negatives get in there and thwart the hurricane season, uh, to as many as 23 named storms, if a lot of things are going the way of favorability, the long-term average is in this reddish color over here. That's 14. Uh, that's where we normally stand for name storms. The most likely is 16 for this year. So that's interesting. I like infographics like this that are easy to understand. Anywhere from 5 to 13 hurricanes. I'm going to tell you what, if we get 13 hurricanes, yikes. That'll be a lot of ace probably and potentially a lot of damage. The most likely outcome, nine hurricanes, long-term average is seven. See, very easy to understand all of this. Four major hurricanes, seven on the top end, one on the low end, long-term average is three, and the most likely is four. So all of this is interesting, yes, uh, and the reason behind all of this is because of this right here. I show it to you often, and that is for a good reason. Notice the cooling again of the equatorial Pacific. It's definitely going back towards a more coolish look rather than El Nino. Absolutely 100% guaranteed. Just looking out the window, you can see that is not an El Nino. This is warm down in the deep tropics, cool in the subtropics. 
Very, very warm in the northeast Atlantic over here. We'll have to see if some of this bleeds down into the Canary Current or influences that some to some extent. And I was reading on some of the different uh, Twitter groups that I'm part of that if we get a warm uh, look over here, that could help to drag the ITCZ more south. Last year it was more north, and it kind of messed things up in August. We're just seeing things. We look out there, the people in my circle that know what to look for, and again, that reference to health experts, Dr. Huberman has different people on, and they have discussions and podcast episodes for hours discussing all kinds of things from musculoskeletal to, again, metabolic disease, nutrition, you name it. Same thing in the weather world. It's pretty amazing, and we're all seeing the same thing. The setup should be there. That's not the same as it's going to be there because we don't know for sure. We don't have that book 50 years in the future. I joke about that from time to time, telling us the outcome. I don't know, but all of this does suggest a very busy season ahead. Conversely to, and certainly opposite of, what we would see for an inactive season. And that's very important to note. If we saw stuff that said we should have a down season, that would be very good news, despite the old it only takes one. When you have more of them, and the potential is there this year for more of them, we do need to pay more attention. But other than that, it doesn't matter because it is impacts over the numbers. I should make that a t-shirt and a bumper sticker and a billboard. Anybody want to sponsor that as a billboard? We'll do it. And people are like, what is he talking about? Like, if they see that. Can you imagine that's on I-75 or I-4 in Florida? <laughs> One of those digital billboards that tells you how long the ER wait is and whatever, uh, amongst other things. But seriously, it's that word right there. And nothing, zero, I'll be the first to tell you, nothing in any of that information that I just gave you will tell you about impacts because we don't know. We don't have a name storm. We don't know where they're going. And even two days out, think about Milton, two days out, we thought Tampa, this could be the one. And it came in just a little south in terms of major historic damage. Milton was bad enough. Helene, same kind of thing. Who would have thought that you would get really serious storm surge from basically Fort Myers all the way up through Tampa that was worse than Milton. Impacts, impacts, impacts. The rain in western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, you name it, from Helene. I could go on and on and on. It's that word right there, impacts. I don't want to say forget categories and other numbers. They are important. But the most important concept is what are the impacts going to be? That is where I help. My colleagues and I, our community out there, once we get something out there, then we will discuss that all-important word, impacts. Impacts over numbers, folks. Remember that. All right? A trademarked feature of this program, right? All right. Uh, nothing out there today in the Atlantic Basin nor the next seven days. And look, you got to admit it's remarkable that this goes out to a week. A week. Yeah, stuff pops up every now and then. We know that. But generally speaking... The science has come a long way, and we're talking about outlooks that now go out to seven days. In the eastern Pacific, something is trying to brew up here, 50-50 shot at development. It is climatologically feasible. It makes sense. There's nothing unusual about this. This area is usually favorable this time of year. We'll watch this area eventually. I'll show you why in just a moment. But if something does get going in the east pack, that is absolutely par for the course. Satellite imagery this afternoon, nice and quiet, generally speaking, all across the Caribbean and elsewhere. Trades blowing through at the surface and the upper levels, strong southwesterly flow. There's more southwesterly flow over the northern Gulf across Florida, out into the western Atlantic, more westerly flow up over the continent, and then it's much lighter, more easterly trades down here. Maybe a little disturbance pops out into this region in a few days and tries to get going. We'll have to wait and see, all right? And then maybe that disturbance, part of this pulse is coming through, this convective pulse, part of the Madden-Julian oscillation, and these smaller pulses that we call convectively coupled Kelvin waves, I often say they're like a Red Bull, to the larger pattern of an MJO event. Bottom line, though, folks like Ben Knoll and others, Eric Webb, 
plenty of other folks that keep an eye on this. They give us these great graphics free of charge so that we can see when something might come. That's amazing. It really is. And I like the, how he puts the main development region in here and the typical Nino area out here in the Pacific. The green is favorable. This reddish color unfavorable for development. And over the coming weeks, we should see that window open in the Atlantic. We'll have to wait and see. When I say Atlantic, I mean Atlantic Basin as a whole, mainly the western part near the Gulf and Caribbean. So we'll see what happens. And then a little further up, this is important here in the main development region for hurricanes. The Atlantic is cooler than this time last year, but the Caribbean Gulf and Western Atlantic are as warm or warmer than last year, elevating concerns for storms forming close to land, which again, I am here to remind you, and we should do a quiz, how many of the last few years hurricanes that we have seen have come from and maintained themselves as major hurricanes hitting the United States from the MDR. None since 2017 that I can think of off the top of my head. None. And in 2017, that was different. We had a couple, right? Or certainly Irma. And then Maria came through, and that affected Puerto Rico and vicinity. But since then, I just can't think of, I mean, Isaias tried in 2020, and that's about it. It's been since 2020, since the East Coast has had one that came up out of the MDR. And so it's that really the western part of the basin that I'm most concerned with. And when I say western part of the basin, let's go back to this map here. Uh, pretty much anything west of about 60 degrees longitude right there, pretty good straight line. That's where I'm most concerned for, and that's where everybody lives. There's a few of us in the Cape Verde Islands probably, but yeah, they can come off and develop here, but then they probably turn out like that. It's the ones that travel off the coast of Africa, the tropical waves, that struggle, 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 blossom a little bit, boom, they come to life, and then they can cut through, or they get even farther west, and we have problems. And that, my friends, is where the warmest of the water is, way over here in the western part of the basin. Look at that, much above normal. That's exactly what Mr. Knoll was talking about here. So while there have been some changes in the deep tropics, it's interesting that nothing really came from there. Nothing took advantage of it. Boy, it sure got taken advantage of in the western basin last year with Helene and Milton. All right, so just keep that in mind. Looking ahead over the next, well, let's just do two weeks. Why not? Because it's nice and benign out there. Look at the trades coming out of, we'll use black here to make it pop better, out of the southwestern Caribbean and into the eastern Pacific. Watch as I move the slider through on the old tidbit site. Yeah, a little piece of energy finally gets going uh, six days out or so. A couple of lobes over there in the East Pack should get its first something. Name storm, maybe we'll see. Nothing to speak of in the Atlantic Basin. That's 10 days out. Yeah, a little piece of energy comes off of the mountains there of uh, Columbia. A little piece of vorticity. The GFS runs with it. Gets all excited over it. Convective feedback, whatever. And it's probably phantom. But it shows yeah, we're there. We're about time. It is about time that we start paying attention to this stuff as we get into the first part of June. All right, so I have spent uh, quite a few days out in the Great Plains recently. Let's take that arrow off of there real quick, shall we? Goodbye. Looking for the giant hail. I'll do another update about all of that on Monday. Uh, the first three expeditions that, were, that I undertook were pretty productive. Had some two-inch hail in a couple of cases, tons and tons of smaller hail, Part of our overall hail project, you've probably seen the big old ice chip project that has commenced. Lots and lots of scientists out there trying to round up hailstones in a number of different ways to study them and give us a better mousetrap, so to speak. Mousetrap, in this case, being roof shingles and other things to reduce the damage, to mitigate against future hail damage, because it is billions of dollars, billions, billions, billions many billions of dollars every year. The tornadoes rightfully get a lot of attention because they are deadly. Most people stay out of the hail. Sometimes tornadoes come right through your community and there's just nothing you can do about it. So I figured I'd start studying hail and throw my hat into that ring, so to speak. I will be taking the next couple of weeks probably and staying home, working on projects here, end of the year stuff with the kids, all that kind of stuff. And of course, when I do that, you know there's going to be big hail out there. Like, God, it never fails. But we got the high plain season coming up, and that is my favorite. It really is. For now, though, the southern plain's pretty active today, tomorrow, 
central uh, plains there, back to the southern plains by day three. Day four, getting into the weekend, still the southern plains, but out in time, a piece. It does look like eventually the high plains, part of the Palmer Divide, etc., should start to get active as we get into June, and I will be out there. Should have a less tornado risk, more of the big hail risk. Did you know the largest hailstone ever found out of Vivian, South Dakota, was in July? Yes, July of 2008. Not March, not April, not May, not in Oklahoma, not in Kansas, but South Dakota in July. I'll be there for it if we ever get one like that again. All right, so there you go. Tropics becoming more and more of an interesting topic of conversation. I know a lot of people get nervous about it. You don't want to hear about it. Again, look at this as information to at least motivate you to stay on top of it. Don't get anxious. Get educated. I like these little catchphrases, but I'm serious about it. You know, look at this and say, all right, hurricane season's coming. Whatever I have to do in my own situation to make sure I am ready, my family's ready. You might have a business. You might be the manager of a business somewhere and you want to get your employees ready. Now is the time to do it because it does appear that we will have a busy season versus one where we could perhaps relax even just a little bit. And then there's always that it only takes one. So you never really can truly relax. But a year like this, we definitely want to make sure we stay on top of it. And I'll help you do the best that I can. All right? Have a great Memorial Day weekend. I'll be back on Monday Memorial Day to do another update. And we'll see what happens between now and then. And we'll have lots to talk about, I am sure. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth again. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in a few days.